Something that I love even more than stress management tools are stress elimination tips. And what I mean by that is we have to learn ways to manage our stress better when we get stressed. That's the whole point. However, if we can do things on the front end to eliminate that stress from ever even happening, even better. So the greatest way to simply eliminate stressful situations and stop them, prevent them from ever even happening is by setting expectations. Now when we think of expectations, we may think of things like goals or a job description. It's what you're expected to do. What do you need to check off the list to accomplish something? However, you can use expectation setting every single day in virtually every conversation you have. Because when you get in the habit of setting expectations as an effective communication measure, there's very little confusion. There's very little miscommunication. When we have miscommunication, we often have stress. Because what that looks like on the other side is, wait, I said do this. Really? I thought you wanted me to do this. No, I didn't. Well, screw you. It's never a good thing, and it creates stressful situations. So setting expectations can look a number of ways, and it can be used in the simplest of conversations. The key here is do not ever assume someone knows what you want them to do whether it is your personal life or your professional life, do not assume people know what you want them to do. It sounds so simple, but we need to always remember what I have in my head is perfectly clear to me. I know what I'm trying to say. I know what I want you to do. I know why. But unless those same things come out of my mouth, with my words and my body language and all of those other things that are talking constantly clearly to the other person, they're not going to know what I want them to do. They're not going to hear it. They may receive it very differently. Always set the expectation. Do not hesitate in a conversation to say, okay, so just to be clear, I need you to do X, okay? Do you have any questions about X? No, fantastic. We need X done by next Thursday. All right, so X needs to be done. So between now and Thursday, let me know if there's any way I can help. As a matter of fact, why don't we touch base with a quick phone call, maybe Tuesday, just to make sure everything's all set for Thursday. Good, awesome. Now, if I just said to that same person, okay, uh, Bob, you're, doing, you're taking care of X, right? You got X, okay, we need that next week, right? Cool, okay, and I move on to the next thing. In my head, I probably assumed, oh yeah, Bob knows he's on X. We're next week, right? Yeah, Bob must know Thursday is when we need it. When Thursday morning rolls around and Bob doesn't know what's going on and you say, Bob, that's what you were supposed to do and you said, what, you said you needed it next week. I got two days. Just set an expectation, get on the same page with any communication. You cannot be more clear by simply stating, here is exactly what I wanna make sure we're on the same page with. The other time when setting expectations can be phenomenal is not just with other people, but with you, with yourself. I'll give you an example of this. Let's say, uh, again, whether it's at home or at work, you decide that you just got some stuff done and you're gonna go take about a 15 minute break. You're just gonna leave. Your body and brain are going somewhere else other than here for about 15 minutes. You know in your head for the next 15 minutes I am offline. I am out of commission. I'm taking a break. As you walk from wherever you are to the door several things might happen because nobody else outside of your head knows that at this moment. So someone might walk up to you and go, hey, Robin, I'm glad I caught you. I have a quick question. Do you have a minute? 
And in that moment, something happens. I stop setting that expectation for myself if I say, yeah, just a minute, what, what have you got? Because I'm going to get into a conversation with this person. I'm not going to be hearing them at all. I'm already ticked off because as far as I'm concerned, you just interrupted me, even though you have no clue you interrupted me. Because it was in my head, you didn't know. If I, if I sit and have that conversation, I'm visibly going to be annoyed. I'm going to be frustrated. I'm going to be angry, upset, whatever might come out. I leave that. Now I only have about 12 minutes. Fine. I start walking toward the door again. My phone rings and I look at it. And I go, oh, really? Now? What do you want? And again, both verbally and visually, I am completely annoyed. You can tell. It disturbed me and my signing off for a few minutes. You don't know that. It's still in my head. Now, the thing is, when I choose to not set an expectation for myself and keep it, what happens is I get mad at everybody else because they bothered me. They interrupted me. They disturbed me in a moment when I was just trying to go do something else. Again, setting that expectation for myself means being true to it. So I could just as easily, when someone walks up to me and says, Hey, glad I caught you. Do you have a minute? I have a question. I can say, you know what? I'm glad you caught me. I'm, I'm going to be out for about 15 minutes, but then I'll be back. Can we touch base then? When that phone call comes on, I can look at the caller ID and here's something you need to always remember about phone calls. If it's a true emergency, they're going to call 911. They're not going to call you first. So there are almost no emergencies on that little box we hold on to 24-7. You can look at something, send it to voicemail, and in your head say, in 15 minutes when I'm back, I'll go ahead and listen to that. I'll take care of it. So the reason some people feel like they have to do everything for everyone the moment it comes up is there's a sense of I'm pushing people away. I'm ignoring them. And that is not only the furthest thing from the truth, but it's completely backwards. If my intention was to go and do something and you happen to catch me in the middle of that, am I going to be in the moment with you? Am I really going to be paying attention and focused on you? No. I'm going to say, fine, what do you need? And in my head, my brain's already walked out the door. My brain has walked out the door. Pretty much the only thing that stayed at that moment is my attitude. Because <laughs> I want to go there. I chose to interrupt that. The person didn't. I did. But if I simply say, you know what, give me 15 minutes. Give me 20. Can we talk at 2 o'clock? Let's do that. I'm not putting someone off. I am actually doing what I should be doing for that person, which is taking them from right this moment when I cannot give you my focus and attention for what you need and move you to this part of my day where I can give you my full attention and my full focus and I can get you exactly what you need from me. So shift that little bit of thinking. Get in the habit of setting expectations, both for other people. Let them know what you want them to do. Do not assume they know. And also for yourself. The clearer you can be and the more direct with yourself allows both your confidence level and your credibility to shoot through the roof while your stress levels plummet.